co-designer with RC, of course, and I want to show you guys some of the sections that are going to give these riders a fit tonight. Here is one of those sections I was talking about. This is a 95-foot double. It's huge. The face, it's all blind. These guys are going to have to do three motos, 10 laps of perfect jumping here to make everything right. This track has huge jumps, but it's got more bumps than an outdoor track. Tonight, these guys are going to hope they have the right setting in their bike because this place is going to get chopped up. This thing's going to be 50, 60 mile an hour, side by side. If they don't have their bikes right, this is going to make a huge difference. All right, some of you guys might have seen a section like this before, bringing back a little bit of the old school. We got the peristyle here in Vegas. These guys are going to be going four stories up in the stands and then tall and tail back down into the stadium. It is going to be awesome. Man, there's some pretty exciting obstacles on this track, Ricky. And now that there have been bikes on the track, what do you think? Is I mean, all the work you guys put in, is it doing what you think it should? Well, I sure hope so. Got a lot of good feedback from the riders. And uh, it's not your typical Supercross track. It definitely isn't. A lot of big jumps. Not your typical whoops in there. And uh, I tell you what, I can't wait. And, and Ricky, that fast sand section. Yeah. First, it took Mike Alessi. He goes down hard. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that right now. This is the okay. first victim of this fast sand whoops. Yeah, you can see how fast he's going, and oh, augers in. You're going so fast, and you can't. It's really hard to get stopped. Hansen goes down. He was the next one, and it looked like maybe a knee, and then uh, look at Cunningham right here. Wow. Look at the bike go flying. I mean, you, didn't, you guys didn't design that section to make it dangerous, obviously, but... Why is it so hard for these guys? Why are they going down like that? Well, I don't know. You know, we definitely make it to be fun. That is our biggest thing. That's what we want to do. And uh, unfortunately, it's motorcycle that racing didn't look and like things. Fun. No, it's supposed to be fun. That's all of our dreams is to make the tracks fun and, and make it good for the fans and, and fun for the riders. But uh, unfortunately, it's claimed some victims. But uh, hopefully, that won't be the case tonight in the race. And uh, we can see some good battle for that million dollar. Yeah, now we got to uh, have these guys here on the start. It's going to be a pretty short start. Do you think yeah. the inside or is the middle going to going to be a spot to go? Absolutely. I think the inside is the best. All right. Well, okay. more to come here from the an inaugural Monster Energy Cup. Stay with us. And that's what we are, ready to race. Guys are in the gate for the first heat. Look at that lineup, RC. Pretty Man. stout. It's good stuff. A lot of guys that you normally see in the lights class bumping up, riding the 450. You've seen Eli Tomac there. Yeah, it's his first time on a 450. And look here, number five on the left of your screen, 2010 Monster Energy Supercross champion debuting the orange KTM. I can't wait to see how he rides this thing. Yeah, I can't either. It's uh, a big jump. There's no doubt about it. I think it shocked a lot of people. Uh, it'll be good. Oh, hey, hey here's our first tweet of the night. Uh, hey, Emig, did you replace Huckabuck for the uh, ME Cup here on Speed? No way. Too many people like it. And I'm going to tell you that sand section coming down Monster Alley is a perfect scenario of what a Huckabuck is, what we saw earlier with some of those get-offs. Look at that lineup, man. Well, it has taken a long time to get here, uh, to get this Monster Energy Cup put together from concept to race time. And now it is about to happen. We're going to drop the gate on the first heat. Yeah. What an amazing event. It has been incredible to watch it all come together. And now it's time to go racing live on speed. Was that a 350 there, Marvin Muscan, actually, on the outside? Oh, Wyndham is down. Not a good way to make the run for the million. Look at there. Brett Metcalf doing work early here, picking up where he left off. Watch this. 90 feet double out here, getting up into probably fourth gear on those 450s. Yeah, huge jump. Oh, you see a couple riders there getting off track, not being able to do that. They're going to lose a lot of time. And they went way to the right, too. You do not want to be landed on off of those jumps. I'm well, looking at Eli Tomac here. This is pretty cool for him. Tomac on the 19, the Honda rider right there in second place. This is that tricky sand section, Jeff. Yeah, and they smoothed out. See how you, uh, they took the dozer there and smoothed out those last couple. That's what was really giving everyone problems. And now for the first time, Metcalf is going to head back up into the grandstand. It, it has been a number of years since we've had a racetrack that came up like this. You can see right now how they've groomed the track. They've put some water down on it. It's real gre greasy right now, the track is. And 
and uh, it's going to take a couple laps for these guys really to find their groove and not make mistakes. Really easy to make mistakes. There's that big double we're talking about, Ralph. Hey, you know Tomac is happy to have 450 <laughs> cc's instead of uh, the 250 that he is used to. You are sure right about that. Definitely uh, not a lack of horsepower on the 450 tonight, and you're going to need it when it comes down to four, uh, for that million dollars. Over the now, finish line jump, Metcalf getting ready to head back out of the stadium. Yeah, and you can see Metcalf. This is his second year on the Suzuki. Dungey here being a little tentative here. This is his first race on the KTM. Let's go ahead and show you what happened to Kevin Windham. Watch oh, for the 14. Down he goes. Jason Thomas runs right in him on the 47. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of little marble-sized rocks in there. And you see right there, see Dungey. He's just kind of skating around. Yeah. The, the, the tires are not really digging in and sticking. No. And, man, how many tear-offs do you have to go through at this <laughs> point, Ricky? Well, they're going through a lot, Jeff, right now. And uh, that dirt is really loose on top. And it's going to take them a couple laps to get it packed in. You can see Dungey looks like he might be planning a little attack here. Yeah, but how about Tomac? What a confidence booster this has to be for um, um, Eli. And remember, just earlier this year in May, he made a run for the West Coast Supercross Lights Championship uh -huh. in this very same stadium. Yes. The championship went to Tickle, but yeah. both of those riders were incredible that night. Remember, top four are going to transfer out of this. This is our first heat race. It's for eight laps. So it'll be great if you can get yourself out of this, right into the show. Then start focusing on those three 10-lap main events that we're going to have later on. Remember, you have to win all three to win the Monster Million. If you just win the overall tonight, that's good for 100 grand. Not a bad day anyway. Well, and there's qualifying, Ricky, but then there's also qualifying and getting that better gate pick leading into the first main. Tonight, and Jeff, you can speak for this as well as I can when we used to race the U.S. Open, is... Start is everything. Gate pick is everything on a night like tonight when well, you got to win all three races to win that million dollars. I mean, it's going to be hey, a premium tonight. Hey, it is every night, but it's really important sure. tonight. Yeah, and, and I mean, back in 99, Ricky, when we were battling for that, I remember thinking, I have got to get the start over Carmichael or I do not have the chance. And that <laughs> well, was, I, that think, was the I think you would have handled me with, for sure because you were on it that weekend, but that out, you know, hey, you got to have a good start. Dungey really applying the pressure now to Tomac. There's Tomac on the 19. This is a fight for second. Here comes Dungey looking around on that Red Bull KTM. And every lap, it, it, Jeff and I had a chance to talk with Roger Nakasha, the team manager for the KTM factory effort. And every lap, Ricky, is a learning experience as they get ready to head back up into the hill section here. Yeah, it sure is. Every lap is. And, and not, to, uh, not to discredit what uh, Tomac is doing either. I mean, he doesn't ride at 450 all the time, so he's kind of in the same boat. He really is. But uh, I think this was good for Dungey to race this race on his new machine uh, to learn how it works in a race situation. Yeah. Re remember, as you watch the name scrolling across the top of the screen, see Kevin Windham's name highlighted in red. That means he's not in that top four transfer. Here come the four highlighted in green. Those are the guys that have those tickets already to the main. If they can stay there all the way to Justin Brayton, then Marvin Muskan, he's one spot out of it, Jeff. Yeah, and Ralph, you remember when we sat with Roger DeCoster, and he was very clear at the the mindset for the team and for Ryan Dungey here coming into this event. If you're going to race, okay, there is it's it's not necessarily was okay. I need to think when, but to put it into context, if you don't feel good and we need to get you more prepared on this KTM, then that's where we're at. If you feel like you can win the million. Go for it, right? Yeah, and the top three, just so you know, just ran their quickest lap so far in this yes. heat on that last lap. So they are getting better. And the other thing, Ricky, that, that Roger talked about, too, was if you don't succeed here tonight, you cannot, this is talking about Ryan Dungey, who we're watching, you cannot let that carry over the next two months as we build towards Anaheim and the start of the Monster Energy Supercross season. No, you got to take everything into account. It's your first race on the bike. You've only been riding it for I don't know how many times he's ridden the machine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, he's going to be way more prepared on the bike come Anaheim. But still, like I said, this is good for him to do this. And uh, anything can happen. I mean, Jeff won the U.S. Open on a bike that he had only ridden for five days. I won the U.S. Open on a bike that I had only ridden for yeah. five days. So yeah. yeah, and let's not forget, at the top of your screen right here, this number 10, uh, Justin yeah. Brayton. He's on yeah. a brand-new Honda here also.